All right, it's another day and I've succeeded. <laughs> like I said, sometimes you just need to take time off. So, uh, like I said, I did want to uh, prototype this uh, circuit here and show you that uh, using 1N4000 series uh, diodes can be, act can be used as uh, reactors. Um, and I couldn't just, I couldn't get the circuit to work. Um, and so I went to the uh, ARRL handbook and I found this circuit and read up a little bit about them. Everybody says that you should be using JFETs. They're much more stable in these applications. You can get uh, NPN transistors to work, bipolar transistors to work, but they say these are much better to use. So um, if, if you look over here, it's the exact same circuit here. It's just the, uh, the it's just that this has been replaced, and the biasing on the uh, gate is is now just 100 k ohms to ground instead of that funny thing that was on the other one. Uh, this one had uh, had some funny biasing on the emitter, um, which is probably why it wasn't working. But uh, this just has a simple simple self biasing to ground, and then D is just tied to to uh, plus 12. Uh, they have a little bit of decoupling here just to show you that you should probably do that so it doesn't get into your power supply. But uh, for this demonstration, I just left it off. And then the output uh, comes off of, uh, off of the source here. And I just left all the values the same. So like I said, I did not change anything out here except for that uh, biasing on the, uh, on the gate. And I changed the uh, transistor to a... Oh, I didn't write it down. It is a very common one. It's a 2N5457. 5457. So it's a very, very common JFET. And uh, yeah, so it's now working. So let me, let's go over there and take a look at it. All right. So let's try it out before it breaks again. <laughs> I think I have it working now. So this is the little uh, potentiometer that I'm going to turn. Okay. And that it adjusts the voltage. Now, it, it really needs to be a, a finer adjustment. This is a bit touchy. Um, the voltage range on the, um, on the, on the Veractor diode should be like, you know, zero to two volts or zero to one volt, something like that. And I, and I have the potentiometer across zero to 12 volts. So I have to touch it just a little bit to make, to make it change, but, but it's working. So let, let's take a look. All right. So, uh, so here we go. I have a, uh, uh, I have the uh, frequency here displayed, uh, so we can see it's 7.2, and I'm going to adjust it ever so slightly. There we go, 1.7.16, 7, seven oh, 6, I went a little too far, so there we go, oh, 7.05, 7. Point, yeah, so you, you, you can see that, it, that it's, actually, it's actually tuning. Like I said, I need a finer, maybe a 10-turn pot with a with a maximum voltage of two volts or something like that. Anyway, you can see that it's actually, it's actually functioning as a, uh, as, as a VCO. So, uh, so success. Yay. <laughs> I, I redeem, I redeem myself. So, so we do have a working VCO, although, although it's, a, it is a bit touchy right now and it needs to have some filtering on it to clean up that little extra little glitch in there, or maybe a, a different, a different value in, in the, uh, in the component selection and stuff like that. It does have that little, that ha does have that little glitch in there. So how far can I go? I would say about two point, almost 2.3. So yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty good range of, uh, a pretty good range of frequencies. So it's, it's actually working quite good. All right, uh, this drawing used to have a, um, a tuning capacitor in it, but of course that's been replaced with a, a Veractor now. So instead of a tuning capacitor, we have a tuning diode. And a lot of times they draw this Veractor with an extra little line in it. I, 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 do, I do like that. Um, if you want to pick some circuit that you want to change over to one with a Veractor, you need to have the tuning capacitor the one that's referenced to ground. That makes it easier so the, the diode is just referenced to ground. So sometimes the capacitor may be somewhere else where it's kind of hard to, to bias it with DC voltages. But if it's, if it's referenced to ground, then it's easy to bias the, this thing with a DC voltage, which is what this circuit does. It's just a high value resistor, 47K, 100K, something like that. And you're putting some DC bias on here to change the effective uh, capacitance of that. And then, and then I changed this circuit into one that's a VCO. This originally uh, had a, a mechanical uh, tuning capacitor and I've changed it over. Now, um, the circuit that was being used um, inserts another diode here. Uh, let me draw it right. 
uh, it puts a second varactor. So if this is one, if this is one varactor here, it puts a second one in here. And I don't think it matters um, if you just have the one or if you have the two. I believe that having two extends the uh, tuning range. Um, I think this makes it a wider tuning range. Uh, it's not quite obvious to me why that's true, but um, it does uh, it does increase the uh, tuning range is what I believe. Um, but anyway, you can either have one or two. It works either way. Um, you can play with that. Um, but the original circuit, uh, original circuit uh, was okay. It's a Hartley configuration with this tapped inductor. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. Um, this is just, just one example. And I wanted to show you that you don't need to buy expensive, uh, expensive uh, fancy diodes. You can just use what's in your, uh, in your junk bin. It seems to work just fine.